Dr. Hani, what sparked your curiosity for uh, pre Arabic languages? You mean pre Arabic? Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, um, when I attended the university in, to, in 1983, I started studying Arabistic, uh, Arabic studies. Um, well, I attended uh, courses in the Arabic morphology, syntax, and um, I found out that uh, most of the uh, linguistic phenomena uh, couldn't be explained by, uh, you know, by the normal, um, you know, methodology which we follow in Arabic studies, usually the traditional Arabic studies. Um, which, in fact, in, in the future, uh, after I, I, I got my BA in Arabistic at, the, at Yarmouk University in 1987, uh, I uh, attended a master program in um, epigraphy. Uh, epigraphy is the study of ancient inscriptions in general, and uh, whether it's uh, they are uh, incised on rock uh, or um, uh, cast in, uh, in metal or on uh, wood. Uh, you know, there are uh, many surfaces. Uh, we can talk about many surfaces where uh, ancient inscriptions um, uh, are written. And um, in fact, uh, the, this study, I mean, studying epigraphy at Yarmouk University, uh, at the Institute of Archaeology and Anthropology, uh, paved my way to understand more about the prehistory. I mean, I mean the pre. Uh, history of Arabic, in fact, <laughs> uh, in general, and also uh, it gives me the opportunity to discover more about um, the cultural history of, of the Arabian Peninsula before Islam, because through the inscriptions we uh, we discover uh, usually um, uh, facts related to religious uh, the, the religious beliefs in Arabia, uh, as well as uh, historical facts that are not attested in the Arabic sources or in the Arabic tradition. Um, what I mean that studying Arabic and Arabic culture in general would not uh, yield to, um, you know, to a u useful uh, conclusions without studying um, the ancient uh, uh, Arabian languages in general. I mean, every student who attend, I mean, who would like to study Arabic and uh, Arabian culture. Uh, should start, you know, maybe from the uh, 10th century BC to have, you know, a, a wide um, understanding and a deep understanding about the uh, Arabian Peninsula and uh, um, its history, its religions and uh, languages. Yeah. And you, you started studying that. Um, was it a new study? Was it like that it was, were you the first or were you one of the first well, to do that? Yes, in fact, uh, we, um, my group, um, in fact, in, in, 19, in uh, 1987, were the second group who attended, which attended um, uh, the uh, MA in epigraphy at the Institute of Archaeology and Anthropology. Uh, and uh, we are now more than 30 professors spread over Jordan and um, uh, worldwide. You know. Uh, and uh, this gave us, of course, uh, um, uh, um, an impulse to uh, to uh, work on uh, to work on further uh, to um, discover our uh, cultural heritage. I mean, our linguistic and cultural heritage in general. Uh, in fact, um, uh, I'm okay. I'm at Yarmouk University now, where I studied before. Uh, but uh, my stay in Germany, uh, in fact, um, uh, I, I invested my stay in Germany to uh, to uh, to go in depth in uh, in, in, in this study, uh, and uh, uh, I tried my best through um, you know um, through German language uh, to uh, discover more and more about. Um, the Arabian uh, culture and uh, uh, the Arabian cultural history, uh, in addition to uh, Levantine, Le Levantine, and um, also the Horn of Africa. Uh, and I'm also interested um, in the relationship between the Arabian Peninsula uh, and the Horn of Africa, uh, in, ad in addition to um, uh, to a wide historical spectrum. Uh, covered by uh, um, my study uh, either through my uh, during my MA period and PhD period in Germany. And in that German period, you uh, you discovered, uh, or you discovered probably before. But what I like in your German period, what you describe is how you somehow through language 
learning the German language, discovered yeah. more and more of the German soul, the German yeah. culture, the German. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, okay, the uh, le I mean, learning German was of great importance for me. It paved the way for to understand um, literature in written in German in general. And uh, as you know, uh, German or any language you learn, uh, it is a kind of um, a key. It's uh, you know a key to the culture itself, uh, not only to literature but also to, to the to the people. I mean, if you understand the language, if you can deal uh, can deal with the language, um, uh, it means that you can discover the culture as well. Yeah. And German is, of course, a living language. It's a language language that's been spoken by lots of people in, in Germany and, and yeah, abroad. Yeah, yeah. You went on in studying languages that are pre-Islamic. Yes, in fact, um, well, um, yes. If if you uh, if you know the system of of a certain language, then it's it, it will be easy for you to to learn other languages. Uh, I mean, I don't. I I talk now about the um, you know the grammar of a, of a language. Not, I'm not talking about the script. You know, and uh, um, yes, uh, I, I had the background how to deal with languages in general. That was for me. Uh, that, that that's why it was for me maybe easy to uh, uh, to learn German uh, and also to deal with it and to write uh, um, a lot of articles and publications in German. Yeah. But when you say you once you know how the key, you you have easy access to the, to the keys. Yeah. Uh, of languages and, and, and of inscriptions. So yes. if, by having those keys, but you, 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 your generation is one of the first, maybe, that yeah. really this... Uh, I mean, uh, if I say generation, I mean the generation in Jordan. I mean, yeah. but I mean, Europeans, um, uh, you know, uh, took care about this um, 100, 200 years ago, since 200 years ago. I mean, uh, it's not, we are not the first in this field, you know, and uh, studying the ancient Arabian uh, uh, culture and uh, I, I mean either in Arabia and I mean the Arabian Peninsula or in the Levant um, I mean the Europeans were uh, pioneers in, in this in this regard I have to say and um, well uh, some uh, of course and also they contributed in deciphering the ancient inscriptions and uh, well uh, my generation uh, which studied abroad um, uh, uh, got the same, uh, uh, got the same experience um, and the same information uh, they gained. Uh, I, I mean, the Europeans has gained before, uh, and uh, of course, um, I mean, uh, in, I mean, on a daily, I mean, uh, there are, uh, um, you know, inscriptions are um, um, are discovered, you know, constantly, um, and some of them are still uh, undeciphered. And but but we have of course I mean uh, inscriptions and languages that we understand and we can deal with the texts and um, uh, draw conclusions from the text either on the linguistic cultural or uh, any other level. But I can imagine that's such a beautiful thing that you discover through inscriptions through understanding languages mm. that you're discovering former cultures and and yes. former. Yes, in fact, inscriptions are uh, repositories of uh, ancient history. <laughs> of course, if you decipher, I mean, if you discover an inscription, it means that you can understand a lot about the uh, environment uh, or the locality where the inscription uh, is found. Uh, yeah. uh, in uh, certain cases, uh, you can date the site, an archaeological site, through the inscription. I mean, not only pottery, but also other uh, uh, Inscriptional material can help us in dating uh, archaeological sites, and we have uh, now. Uh, I mean, if you get, um, uh, if you, uh, if the inscription is dated, for example, then now you have a fixed date uh, of of a certain site. But sometimes uh, the paleography, um, paleography. I mean, the way you write inscriptions, uh, it go. It also gives you indications about uh, um, the. Um, you know, uh, it gives you a, a little bit some information about dating, about dating the site, but not uh, not in exact details. Yeah, I mean, also, I mean, if you discover an inscription which is new and you you will you are the first one who uh, read it and understand understand it, and then you uh, convey 
to the humanity and new experience and new information that are um, uh, um, in my in my opinion of great importance um, uh, to understand the human creativity and the uh, and uh, when you discover such a when you decipher such an inscription and you yeah. de what does that do for it, it, it opens a window to a to a to 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 to, to, to a culture that that was once here and yeah of course i mean you understand um, as soon as you uh, discover and decipher an inscription and understand it uh, of course it opens uh, a window to um, uh, to a lot of historical facts and uh, uh, cultural historical facts uh, um, uh, about the region where it's uh, it is discovered yeah. and when you say that you are or your generation um, is one of the first from Jordan yes. or from the Arabian Peninsula um, uh, in, in investigating or, or doing scientific research on these inscriptions yeah. and what does that mean that you are the first from this region to do that? What does that say of? Well, in fact, um, it means a lot. Uh, it means that we have now a generation from, uh, you know, from Jordan. I mean, uh, from the area, from the region in general, uh, which can deal with its cultural heritage and understand it, um, um, and understand it in, um, you know, in in, in the same historical and geographical context. You know, if I talk about, um, okay, I mean, Europeans, uh, they contributed in the, the deciphering the inscriptions, they contributed uh, in, in understanding the inscriptions, but sometimes, um, some of them, of course, some of them, uh, they lack the cultural background, you know? I mean, I have to say that frankly. I mean, some of them, they lack the cultural ba background, therefore, I mean, our their understanding of the entire story uh, is a little bit vague, you know. Uh, but uh, of course, I mean, uh, now, um, uh, in fact, we are not working uh, alone here. We are working also with our European colleagues um, in Europe, mainly in Europe and the United States uh, and other countries. And we exchange opinions about certain issues in, um, in this regard, I mean, and after that we reach a conclusion. And, and but you bring and, in uh, some extra yes. layer, because, or, or a very important layer, yeah. because you are from this... Yes, from, from the same region, yeah. yeah. Um, yes, but I, don't, I have to say that um, my European colleagues also help in, uh, help in different regards. Now, um, in different perspectives. Um, I mean, we conduct um, uh, um, joint surveys, uh, we conduct also joint studies uh, together. And I think it's important not from the uh, scientific perspective, but also from the cultural perspective, mm -hmm. uh, because it's, it's important to get in contact um, with our European uh, colleagues and, uh, I mean, not only Europeans, but uh, outside Jordan, I mean, our colleagues from outside Jordan to have exchange uh, uh, which means um, that uh, we can do more uh, for cultural understanding as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but when you say that you're, as you're born here, you're raised here, you're, you're, you're part of this culture, yeah. and you are one of the first um, uh, working in this field and understanding those languages, yeah. um, that makes you a... Uh, that I can imagine it's, that's a very special role you have. In a very important role, but a very special role. Yes, I, I can't. I personally can't evaluate myself <laughs> and uh, whether I'm uh, uh, whether I'm whether I have a special role or not. It's uh, you know the academic um, uh, the academic world which should decide this. You know, I mean, I'm not the one who decides that because I can't. No, but you have them. what you do is you shed light on a on times yeah. that people here seems before not know much about at yeah. least. How do yeah, you th see this that? is true. Yeah, this is true, and yeah, I, I mean, um, well, some generations. Um, I mean, uh, what I want to say that um, uh, to, to be broad, broad-minded, and uh, to accept the opinion of others is of great is a crucial to understand uh, and to exchange. Uh, um, uh, to exchange ideas uh, and to also to reach reliable conclusions. Uh, 
um, I think that who, is, who would like to study this um, uh, the culture in general uh, should have a broad knowledge about a lot of things, you know. Not only history, not only languages, but also um, ancient uh, uh, history and also modern, modern history and ancient cultures and, uh, and uh, modern culture. I mean, they are not uh, separatable. We cannot separate them because, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the Nabataeans um, uh, who lived in this area for a long time, I think, uh, I mean, they, exist, they existed after that. I mean, what I'm talking about uh, is the change of political entities, and, and, but the people are the same. The people are the same, and they also, uh, uh, they, uh, um, you know, continue to live in this, uh, in, in this area, in this region. Uh, and uh, I think we have to uh, to take into consideration. Um, um, I mean, uh, a lot of perspectives uh, to, towards studying a certain uh, topic or a certain uh, subject uh, in our cultural history in general. Uh, it is. I mean. I mean, studying the past is connected with. Uh, uh, I mean, with the, with the, our living, uh, our living heritage. Uh, we cannot uh, separate them. Um, but, but the fact that you shed light on the on on the times that that before people here w wouldn't know much about because it was not. Yeah. Um, w what? Uh, w w where? Why? Why is it? Why is it that that you are one of the first to do just that? No, I, I have some colleagues who are older than me and did that, <laughs> of course, but. Um, um, I think it, it's, it's important to have a generation here uh, who, which is co you know, interested in its cultural heritage and cultural history. Um, and you, what I want to say is, you, by, by being one of the first uh, Jordanian uh, professor now, but, the, the, but one of the uh, scientists uh, researching and investigating ins inscriptions and languages and shedding light on a time mm. that somehow. Uh, is not known about what why is it that those times uh, what makes it that those times were not seen uh, or not accepted or not embraced by before yes because uh, you know uh, I, I mean if I uh, take the Arabian Peninsula um, I mean as an example uh, the Arabic sources, for example, uh, the, which wrote, that wrote about the Arabian, uh, that are con they were concerned with the Arabian Peninsula and its history, uh, they didn't get, uh, in fact, um, the access uh, to ancient sources, because uh, at that time they couldn't, uh, 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 they hadn't the um, instruments uh, that uh, you know give them the access, for example, to ancient South Arabian epigraphy or ancient North Arabian epigraphy or Nabataean uh, epigraphy. Uh, I mean, we are talking about um, 200 years uh, old uh, discipline. I mean, not, uh, not, that, uh, not that ancient, you know, it's not that old. Yeah, uh, and uh, we can expect that uh, such Ar Ar Arabic sources um, uh, do not cover uh, the entire, um, uh, I mean, they cover maybe uh, 200 years before Islam, for example, but they don't go uh, uh, deeper uh, into history because uh, the composer and the authors they didn't have the access uh, to, such, uh, uh, to such an epigraphical source. Yeah. And that so th th that's why it's important uh, to um, take into consideration uh, the archaeological uh, sources and epigraphical sources as well as uh, uh, maybe um, oral history as well. It's, it's also important. I mean, oral history is, is important and, uh, to understand ancient cultures uh, because the same people are still living. I mean, the same people um, uh, who uh, uh, you know established ancient cultures? I mean, their descendants are still uh, are still there. You know, uh, yeah. I, I, uh, that's why I feel um, um, it's important to uh, to study the Arabian Peninsula in a holistic approach, uh, where we can take into consideration the epigraphical sources, the archaeology, uh, in addition also to uh, living heritage. But when you say like the um, like the uh, before the, 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 the ancient pre-Islamic cultures were not uh, uh, really part of the of the of the Arabic storytelling of the Arabic history, 
um, it's that's now changing then I suspect because you you bring them the stories of those days yes um, yeah this is now we have a, a new window to ancient history <laughs> of the Arabian Peninsula this is a new one this, is, this new window uh, was not possible to open without studying, uh, um, you know, deciphering uh, inscriptions, uh, deciphering the ancient, uh, ancient Arabian and Semitic inscriptions in general. Yeah. And what does this this window? Because I suppose much of the students you get, they are taught in the in a way that they don't understand those times before. Yes. Uh, how how do they say? How do they see those that area that era when they come in your your faculty? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. In fact, um, uh, students who come to our faculty, they have their own, you know, st stereotype uh, uh, ideas about uh, Arabia or about uh, the Semitic cultures in general. But when they get uh, deeply involved in, in this field, uh, they, start, they start changing their, uh, their understanding and also their methodology towards studying uh, uh, the cultural history uh, of the Semitic world. But, but what, what what is their view when they come in? But, but, but how, do, how do they see it then when they don't have this knowledge? Is it a kind of ignorant times? Or in what, fact, most of our students who are coming to, to, to Yeni, they, in fact, um, they are selected, you know, uh, mm -hmm. because they know, uh, I mean, they know in prayer uh, what are they going to do, you know. And uh, because they have a little bit, uh, uh, you know, um, a little knowledge about this and about ancient uh, uh, the cultural history of, of, of Arabia and the Semitic world in general. Uh, but um, uh, at the Institute, uh, we train them and we uh, conduct surveys uh, so that they understand uh, uh, what we are doing in a better way. Yeah. But what is the, because the, I suppose the view that they have, nor or the, 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 the people from Jordan and from the Arabian Peninsula, what, how do they see, in general, the times before Islam? Well, uh, in fact, uh, f uh, the Arabian Peninsula was a flourish. Uh, we ha they had a flourishing uh, civilization in, in Arabia before Islam, and uh, the word jahiliya or the ignorance period. Uh, I think it's not the right word to use in this context. Because, uh, uh, you know, j ignorance, it means that the people who were living there were ignorant and uh, uh, they were not in contact with the civilization, etc. But this is, in fact, um, a little bit, you know, it should, I mean, the idea should be modified a little bit. Uh, in fact, Arabia um, witnessed um, a flourishing culture. I mean, um, economically and uh, historically and culturally in general and uh, it's our role now to present this culture which is which was hidden in the inscriptions in fact that's your role to yeah. present yeah. Th th that's your role i mean to present uh, to present the contents of this uh, ancient heritage to be absorbed by the uh, young generation because it's part of their identity it's part of their history and I think it's it's our role now to uh, uh, to make them aware that um, Arabia is not um, you know uh, I mean I mean maybe jahiliya in terms of religious of, of the religious perspective, but from the civilized perspective, Arabia uh, uh, I think especially the southern parts and the central parts they are of uh, great importance and significance for uh, to, to understand uh, the um, uh, the uh, um, I mean the um, okay I'm, I'm yeah, not no, no problem. Uh, I, th I think the sources uh, give us uh, new glimpses I mean the ancient sources the in ancient inscriptions give us new glimpses uh, on the uh, um, hidden history and the hidden um, uh, culture of Arabia before Islam and this is uh, you know now evident I mean uh, evident through uh, you know research and through archaeological surveys uh, and through also studied uh, studies uh, uh, published uh, you know <laughs> I mean I mean we have thousands of, of publications uh, in this regard but most of them, in fact, are written in foreign languages. That's why they are not accessible by Arab people. 
Yeah, and it's our uh, role now to, I mean, not to translate um, the uh, this huge literature, but also to, uh, but to. Um, uh, represent uh, to present the uh, cultural history of Arabia in, in in Arabic, for example. This is I think this is important now, uh, so that uh, Arab people can have access uh, uh, to the source. Yeah. yeah. And when you you have uh, you you studied several uh, languages, you let you can lay connections. Uh, so you you create a, a, a world that had been here. That now, that that before was not understood by people. I mean, you, you mean the scholarly world or what? No, the, the, both. If you are you are you 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 are you are putting a light on times that uh, that for most people um, was not not known yet. So people understand now that, for example, here in Peta, that this is the culture of of what what it what it what it stands for. Yes, of course, but I, I have to say that I'm not the first one in this regard, no, of course. Uh, but, you know, understanding... Um, uh, mean, if, if you talk about epigraphy or the ancient languages, yes, of course, as I said in the, the beginning, they are, in fact, uh, the, uh, the key to cultures. And uh, Nabatean, Nabatean inscriptions are written in Nabatean language, in Nabatean script, and if you decipher the script, then you understand the language and you understand uh, after that the contents of, of, of a certain inscription. Uh, and from this uh, inscription, you can extract and uh, draw conclusions regarding uh, religious history, regarding commercial issues, regarding uh, social relations among people at that time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, through this knowledge, uh, you can uh, nurture the, um, uh, uh, the uh, you know, the uh, history of, of this region, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And it, do, is it, do you see then also that there are connections between uh, the pre-Arabic world and the Arab world that, that somehow, I mean, like, uh, yeah, do, you, do you see connections that before had not been seen? Between the pre-Arab, pre-Islamic pre world yeah. and the, and the Islamic world, yeah. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yes, of course, because the, the people, you know, continue to exist in Arabia, and of course they uh, uh, they got with them, uh, you know, uh, ancient traditions that continued until nowadays. Yeah. Mm. Do, do you have examples of of, of that? Well, uh, let us say something. Uh, in in so, some uh, ancient South Arabian inscriptions from Yemen, from current, from present Yemen, uh, in fact, we rely on uh, Yemenite dialects to understand ancient inscriptions, uh, because some words that occur in ancient South Arabian inscriptions, they are still used in Yemen. You know, I mean, uh, and this is this is a fact. You know. And also some rituals that existed, I mean, that we know from the inscriptions, are still existent, uh, existing until nowadays, you know, in, in Yemen. And uh, which means that this culture continued to exist, uh, a part of political changes, a part of, uh, uh, you know, economic changes, but people uh, preserved this cultural heritage and continued to transmit it. Yeah. Is that is also is that also with the camel burial, or is that another? No, it's something different. That's something different. <laughs> okay, sorry for that. Um, one, and it's something different. I mean, the camel burial uh, inscription is uh, okay. It's from Wadi Ram, but uh, okay. I mean, this is an evidence about resurrection, you know. Okay, and uh, that people in Arabia used to bury their camels with them. Uh, <laughs> so that the camera has stopped. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we should stop. Uh, where did your passion for languages and inscriptions start? Well, it, the uh, in fact, this passion started after my, um, in fact, during my BA studies in in, in Jordan at Yarmouk Universities and Yarmouk University. Um, I tried my best to understand the Arabian culture and. Um, uh, more deep and, and, and uh, with a more depth, uh, but I didn't find my, uh, you know, 
uh, I didn't find this in uh, during my BA studies as I, um, you know, because we were studying Arabic and uh, Arabistic in general in, in, in a traditional way, uh, studying the languages in a sing, uh, I mean, uh, not in um, a diachronic uh, uh, way, but in synchronic way. <laughs> And, um, well, I started looking for programs uh, that, um, uh, that could help me in uh, deciphering the ancient history of Arabic in general and the ancient uh, uh, history of the Arabian culture. Uh, and um, that was after 1987 when um, I attended a master program at the Institute of Archaeology and Anthropology where um, uh, I studied epigraphy uh, and I finished my MA in uh, epigraphy and uh, the, my master thesis was concerned with the uh, relationship, with the lexical relationship between Arabic and Ugaritic. Uh, Ugaritic is um, one of the uh, Bronze Age, late Bronze Age languages that existed on the Mediterranean Sea and uh, um, uh, I tried to find the lexical affinities between Arabic, uh, uh, what you call, some, some scholars call it classical Arabic or um, uh, standard Arabic. Uh, there are different terminology. I mean here the Arabic of Quran and the uh, pre-Islamic Arabian poetry. Uh, and uh, I found out that uh, there are a lot of uh, um, uh, aspects that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, constitute a kind of... Um, uh, lexical similarity between uh, Ugaritic and uh, and Arabic, uh, and uh, yes, because this could be of course explained because both languages are um, they have the same mother language, which we call it. Uh, it's a hypothetical language. We call it Proto-Semitic, and uh, this lexical um, stock could be you know from this. Uh, uh, I mean, from this genetic um, uh, uh, relationship, but it could be also, uh, uh, I mean, th this, this relationship could be also through historical, uh, historical factors. Um, when, um, I mean, by um, migrations, by, um, uh, you know, historical contacts, uh, commercial contacts, etc. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of uh, historical models to, um, to explain this similarity. But in general, uh, I mean, most of the languages in, uh, Levant, in the Levant and Arabia, and also in Mesopotamia, they are interconnected, uh, and uh, they, we call them sister languages because they come from the same, uh, from the same origin. Uh, the origin we call it uh, uh, proto-Semitic. Uh, uh, I want to, uh, to go back. What is your fascination for yes. for those old languages? Yes, because uh, I, I found, uh, in, in general, I found the languages, uh, they, I mean, studying the languages provide us with the right instruments to decipher cultures. Uh, I mean, for example, I, um, I did for five years uh, ancient Ethiopic, old Ethiopic language, because my professor in Berlin, Professor Reiner Vogt, was, um, uh, I mean, he is a renowned professor in this uh, field. And I did with him five years uh, studying, you know, ancient Ethiopic or, or, or uh, old Ethiopic. Uh, and why? Because I wanted to understand the relationship between Arabia and uh, the Horn of Africa. I mean, uh, I mean, studying the language would explain a lot of uh, historical facts and uh, uh, historical phenomena uh, in terms of relationship between Arabia and the Horn of Africa. This is an example. Uh, and um, uh, yes, and as I said to you, because I was uh, interested in uh, in exploring the history of Arabic language and the Arabic la uh, 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 the Arabic culture in general. In general, but what, where did it even before your studies? Where where did this fascination for languages and for 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 this for this where, where did, where did yes, it start? I was in fact in general I was interested in languages uh, even uh, during my <laughs> childhood and uh, also uh, in, uh, in my um, uh, that's why I was interested in English uh, I mean from the beginning uh, although I was studying Arabic you know and uh, uh, because I found uh, I found out that studying a certain language would open and pave the way for for me to get um, uh, deep information about certain um, uh, about certain uh, aspects of our cultural history, 
Um, I mean, from the beginning, I was interested in, 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 in languages, but I, I can't say how this <laughs> uh, how this uh, evolved in, uh, at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you were really young, I mean, uh, when you were ten or eleven, well, how how, does, how did it how did it show? How, what, what what was the fascination then? Fascination in, in languages? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't remember it. <laughs> I mean, I can't uh, make a synthesis in, in this regard. Yeah. But what, I mean, did you want to discover the world, understand the world? Did you, did you want to be a Jules Verne or? A I don't know. I can say that um, you know uh, we had no internet at that time. Uh, TV also was not um, accessible at that time because I am I was born in a village where th where electricity <laughs> didn't exist at that time uh, until the 1982, in fact, uh, and uh, um, you know we had uh, a radio uh, and uh, that was our <laughs> window to the world, you know. And um, of course, I, I heard a lot of languages in, in the radio. I mean, I, dis I uh, um, found out later that uh, this is German, this is French, you know. At that time, I couldn't, uh, you know, differentiate between German, French, or uh, Dutch, or uh, Swedish, or Russian. Uh, but, you know, this, I mean, w w when I started to hear, um, I mean, there were voices, only voices, you know, for me. And uh, but there are there are certain uh, points where the pronunci pronunciation is different from uh, uh, different different. I mean, differs from each other. Uh, and uh, well, maybe this is one of the um, one of the reasons why I was uh, in, in, interested. I mean, I mean, was interested in languages. Because how did you listen then to the radio? You were like. Can you describe it was in the living room or how, how did you know that, that you could find different languages? <laughs> yeah, I can, uh, I can tell you. Yeah, I, I mean, it was in, in the living room, of course, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I don't understand your question. No, yeah, how yeah. do you, it's, it's a radio, you, 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 you go, you, you hear those languages. How, how did you do that? Were you s scrolling through the channels? Were yes, you yes, scrolling through, through the channels and uh, trying to, uh, even even within the Arabic, it's fair, you know, and uh, I, I try to, um, you know, uh, we have many dialects here in the Arab world, and uh, it was for me at the beginning difficult to understand, for example, the Algerian or the Moroccan dialect, and uh, th this is one, <laughs> this is one example why I I, I tried to uh, study, I tried uh, to have the uh, right instruments to study languages because the uh, the Arabian, the Arabic dialects, uh, they are also they could be considered as languages because sometimes they have different morphology and different syntax. Uh, and this made me also um, enthusiastic to, uh, to pursue studying languages. In fact, I can't uh, classify the factors why I was interested in languages from the beginning. Um, I don't know, I have no uh, personal synthesis about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are from a, f you are from a family that that's also uh, uh, scientific interested or yes in fact uh, my family um, uh, w in fact uh, the, the, they were interested in uh, I mean my my father is a businessman and um, uh, my family in general uh, they used to earn money through business uh, and uh, it was my uncle in fact who uh, my elder uncle who supported me and um, you know, opened my eye to uh, uh, the academic world uh, because he is considered one of the first graduates from the Jordan University. Yeah, and uh, he, uh, yeah, in fact, he uh, supported my uh, career, my um, uh, my studies, and also uh, opened uh, my eyes to, towards uh, you know towards the world in general because he. Uh, got in contact with the uh, people in Amman and the capital city and uh, also worldwide. That's why he wanted me to, <laughs> you know, to, to, to deviate from the career of my family, you know, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And when you um, could describe your... Well... <laughs> what sparked your curiosity? Well, in regarding languages, yeah. 
uh, well, uh, in fact, I am a patient uh, guy. I have to, I have to say, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm very patient, and I mean, even from childhood, uh, I used to uh, help my father uh, in his store and in his business since I was seven years old. In fact, I have to say that. And uh, this caused, uh, you know, this uh, part of my life, uh, this shaped my life and um, to be a serious uh, person. Uh, and because I didn't, um, in fact, I didn't um, enjoy most of the children at my age enjoyed before, you know. Uh, and um, well, my father wanted me to be, okay, the best among the, <laughs> in the village. And uh, he sent me first to um, a Roman Catholic uh, school in Erbid. Uh, that was in 1970. And uh, the story of my academic life, or my, uh, um, you know, my, uh, you know, my school life, started there. But uh, due to the problems that occurred in uh, in in Jordan at that time, well, my father preferred that I come go back to to the village and study there, and continued studying there, doing my uh, preparatory, my elementary preparatory and uh, secondary. Um, uh, schooling i did it in the village in fact and even in um, a village uh, nearby where i and i used to walk from my house to that village for three kilometers sometimes and uh, maybe this um yani this walk uh, uh, you know stimulated me to think about the world and about sometimes the creation about a lot of things <laughs> where you know usually i mean usually uh, uh, um, school boys think sometimes some some of them they don't think uh, think about it because they have their other interests uh, and um, in fact uh, uh, even even this this influenced my life in the, uh, my future life I mean in the university even in Germany uh, and also later I can see uh, I can see uh, well in during the element preparatory and elementary um, period uh, phases. Uh, I we used to study uh, Arabic poetry, ancient Arabic poetry, and I was uh, fascinated, in fact, um, uh, with the contents of the Arabic poetry in general and how uh, they can be recited in a in a rhythmic uh, in a rhythmic style. Uh, and uh, but I was interested also to understand uh, the words uh, integrated are used in this in this um, uh, in such passages, poetical passages. And um, I can assure you that uh, later I, I found out that our teachers sometimes they explained uh, in a traditional way. So they explained some words in a traditional way. But I was not convinced, you know, uh, I, I was not convinced mostly in their explanations. Uh, and uh, I kept this until I went to the university uh, in 1983, where I attended um, the Arabic uh, program at Yarmouk University. And we went, in fact, uh, with the assistance of um, uh, professors of Arabic uh, studies, we went in depth in, uh, to study uh, in studying the ancient Arabian uh, Arabic poetry. Uh, but uh, the, um, I mean, the, the, the problem, I, I didn't find a solution f for my problem. I mean, how to understand um, the Arabic poetry in a proper way and how, what are the origins of some certain words in, 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 this, uh, in this Arabic poetry. Uh, and uh, also, I mean, to explain how uh, uh, linguistic phenomena uh, could be, uh, um, you know, how could we explain certain linguistic phenomena in, in Arabic in, in, in particular, uh, in within this uh, uh, wide uh, context, uh, I mean, within this wide Arab cont Arabic context where Arabic is used, you know, as you know, Arabic is used in different parts of the world. Um, in fact, that was not enough for me because I, I, I you know, I started to um, to excavate and to dig uh, uh, for the origins of Arabic, and I found my um, I found some of of the answer. Uh, during my MA studies, my MA studies, where we exposed uh, to, um, in fact, um, I have to say European experience. I was taught by different uh, European professors and American professors at the Institute of Archaeology and Anthropology at that time. We uh, were exposed to um, 
uh, and also, I mean, we uh, um, um, attended courses uh, to study, for example, Karanite, uh, ancient South Arabian, uh, old Ethiopic, um, uh, Aramaic, etc. And they are more, uh, all of these language, uh, all of these languages are sister languages, and go back to one. Um, uh, to one source or to one origin, which we called uh, uh, proto-Semitic. Uh, now, um, well, uh, I, I, well, this in fact um, open paved the way for my future research, uh, and uh, since then I, I I was interested in um, in studying more and more more, uh, more ancient languages to um, understand uh, Arabic and. Um, uh, and its uh, context in a proper way. Uh, well, as I... Uh, and what, what makes that now you unique in the world? It makes you well, unique. Yes. <laughs> Why? I'm afraid of this word unique. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm trying to connect uh, and to find the relationship between Arabic and its cultural and linguistic uh, context. This is this is what I'm trying to show to uh, uh, to uh, my not only to my colleagues also to my um, uh, uh, students and also to uh, make it um, uh, known abroad. Um, uh, this I mean this uh, methodology was uh, was not known in fact in the Arab world. I mean how to connect Arabic with its uh, surrounding uh, languages through ages and also the culture where Arabic uh, uh, emerged. Yeah. Uh, well, this influenced, of course, my future studies uh, and uh, future research. Um, I did my uh, MA, uh, uh, I did my MA thesis on the relationship between Arabic uh, and uh, Ugaritic because uh, Arabic is an important source, uh, because it's a language which uh, existed and continued to exist uh, in Arabia and uh, the Levant, also in, of course, in, in, uh, in North Africa. What, so one second, what do we hear? Uh, we hear uh, the Adhan, you know, <laughs> Adhan al-Asr. Yeah, what uh, is the Adhan al-Asr? Yeah, I mean, um, as, as you know, in, we have yeah, Islamic what, prayers, uh, five prayers, this is the... Uh, uh, the uh, the we call it Adhan al Asr, which comes after uh, afternoon. Um, you said at a certain moment in your when you were young, you lis you listened to this Arabic poetry, and, uh, yes, and read. Yes. Uh, so, sorry, in fact, it it was um, included in the curricula in yeah. the school, yeah. And also, I, I hear that uh, you know uh, some some people improvised it, you know, and I was interested in understanding the meaning of uh, of this poetry uh, in a proper way. But you know, usually, usually uh, people recite this poetry, but they sometimes uh, don't understand the cultural backgrounds of this poetry. And I was interested in the cultural background, not only on the how to be recited. It's beautiful to to hear it. But I was understand. Uh, I was uh, interested um, in understand uh, in understanding the, the cultural dimensions of, of of this poetry and its uh, uh, language. So you missed that in the yes, in the recital. I, yeah, yes, th this is this is what I missed. In fact, during my uh, school period, uh, also I, I can say even during my BA period and at the university, because they used uh, to teach us in a traditional way. Uh, you know, trying to explain, they, they, they couldn't, uh, you know, um, you know, t uh, explain the, the the cultural backgrounds of, of this poetry, uh, and uh, not only the cultural backgrounds, but also the um, the contained uh, uh, lexical items that uh, that were for, for for me very difficult uh, to understand as uh, as a young guy, you know. Uh, because uh, uh, the Arabian poetry represents, uh, or the Arabic poetry represents um, a very old stage of the Arabic literature, and uh, and it was, I don't, I can't, uh, I can't say that it was disconnected from the people, but it was, it, it represented a certain uh, uh, cultural phase in Ar the Arabian Peninsula, and I was, you know, in future uh, stages of my life, I. I uh, I was interested in to understand in depth uh, the the cultural background and the cultural context of this poetry, 
and uh, also um, um, the Quran, uh, the beginning of Islam. I mean, the language of Quran uh, was also for me a very difficult language to understand. I think, and I think we can shed some light on uh, the Quranic text uh, from different languages that existed in, Ara in Arabia before Islam. Because some words uh, continued to be used, uh, uh, continued to be used uh, uh, in, uh, at that time, and also they, they were part of, of the Quranic text. Uh, and uh, I was interested in, uh, uh, in, in, in understanding uh, such words in, in Quran, and uh, I have uh, uh, some research on, on this regard. I have, uh, I started a project on, uh, on, on this regard, yeah. Can, can you, to, to go back, do, do you remember the poem, the first poem that, that makes you? Well, there are, in fact, uh, uh, I'm interested in the uh, pre-Islamic Arabian poetry, and which goes back to the so-called Jahiliya poetry, uh, or the Jahiliya age, or the ignorance period. Uh, for example, uh, the, um, the po poems of Antara and uh, Zuhair bin Abi Sulma and other Can you, uh, can you recite one? Well, <laughs> well, um, now not, no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, well, and also Arwa ibn al-Ward and other people, uh, other people. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I'm not, I was not prepared to do this, you know, <laughs> because I, a few... Okay, then then, then I'd like to go back to the last th thing which you said about the Quran Quranic... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this, yeah. What, what did you? F what, what what are you doing with? The, you, you you say you are. Um, you, you you see you see that it also not is disconnected from the people, but it's somehow it's an it's a language form that is not. I mean I mean I mean the poetry was. Yeah. Okay. It was not definitely not connected. It, it was it uh, it emerged in uh, you know in a cultural context of course because mm -hmm. uh, this poetry describes the people describes uh, their relationship with the environment. It describes also their. Uh, uh, their uh, understanding of of the world, you know, at that time. No, uh, but uh, sorry, I, I mean, um, when we go back to the Quran, Quran the yeah. Quranic. You were no, saying no. that you now, with what you are finding, you are um, finding new words also for the Quran, or you find new. No, uh, I'm not finding new no, words, no. but no, I mean, I. Uh, well, um, well, there are certain Quranic words that could be interpreted in. in a different way you know I mean okay the Arab exegetes uh, they contributed a, a lot to understanding the, uh, the Quran but uh, in, in some cases uh, we can do more for to understand this text through uh, um, through uh, the languages that existed in Arabia at that time yeah and because it it they they are have all their also their roots Yes, of course. I mean, uh, such words they have their or, their uh, their roots in in the languages of, Ara of Arabia before Islam, and yeah, I mean, w we have, for example, some words that were Arabized. You know, they became Arabic. You know, although they are foreign words, uh, foreign words, but they they became Arabic and they became part of the uh, Arabian linguistic culture, uh, and you found in you found them, uh, you know, in, in different pre-Islamic Arabian texts. And also, the, they uh, they are known. Some of them are known in, in the Quranic texts because they they are not, in fact, um, they were they were foreign words, but they were Arabized. You know, they took the Arabic shape. You know, as uh, you know, as usual in la the inter interchange between languages, uh, it's known. You know, and, uh, and you, the, and yeah. you can you are discovering that now. You're, you're well, I'm trying to yeah to yeah to deal with certain words and um, understanding uh, to understand them in uh, in uh, in a different uh, lexical context. What do you uh, mean by that? Uh, I mean to interpret them in the light of ancient Semitic languages that existed in Arabia before Islam. And uh, uh, how can you give examples? Yes, there are uh, some examples. Uh, I mean, for example, uh, the verse "Inna sharahna laka sadrak," uh, which, which has been interpreted, um, uh, "We opened your uh, chest," and uh, you know there are different uh, of interpretations. But we, if go back to, uh, for example, to ancient South Arabian linguistic culture, we find that, that the root "sharaha" uh, it means to protect. Which means, in fact, if we reinterpret the, um, this, it means that we, I mean, the God, 
uh, has protected uh, Muhammad's pro, uh, Muhammad's heart. You know, this is you know this helps us to understand uh, the texts in a better way, and it is in, it's for the benefit of Quran. In fact, uh, you know, it's the, for the benefit of Quran. Uh, I mean, to use uh, um, uh, I mean to use the uh, ancient languages uh, to uh, and uh, to shed light on Quran through uh, other language, other Arabian languages. Okay, then we go back to um, when you, we, we were with your students, you were with your students uh, uh, in, the, in the mountains, yes. um, looking at these stones and this, this yeah. in, enormous terrain. With, when, you, when, you, when you look for them at the, um, uh, and for yourself, when you, when, when you, when you envision your, your future, your, the, 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 the ideal dream of what they can do, what you can do here in this area, what, what would you, how do you envision that over 10, 15 years? Well, I, how do I envision my students or the field yeah, in general? <laughs> I, I put the question wrong. Yeah. Um, when you look in your, in your, in your field of work yeah. with your students, you, you, you walk into boundaries. That's what you, what you explained before. What do you envision for the coming 10 years? What, what do you want them to find out? And what is it that you yourself would want to find out? Well, uh, in fact, I, I would like to continue uh, in this field, uh, and I, of course, I, I hope that they uh, can, uh, that my students can continue as well, uh, because uh, this is a message that we have to uh, hand out to other, uh, to, uh, to future generations, and uh, I, I hope that we can uh, establish a kind of school. I mean, a school, academic school, you know. Uh, to understand uh, that uh, which aims at understanding our um, uh, Arabian culture uh, from in, in the Arabian Peninsula and also in the Levant. Yeah, th that's what my, my aim, that they continue on um, the, on the same discipline and uh, also they, uh, that they co continue and also in training future generations. Yeah. And when you look, um, because you walk, you walk into limitations you said you were the first one that shed a light in a in an era where where, where much of the people here didn't see the light yes. what do you think that your students will what what kind of windows are they able to open well i hope uh, you know i mean they can uh, of course they can i don't know i mean it's it's of course their uh, decision i mean to follow my discipline or not uh, but uh, definitely they are going to contribute in understanding uh, uh, the um, Arabian culture in its widest, uh, widest uh, context. Uh, um, I like them to work, uh, I mean, on the history of Arabic. Uh, I mean, I would advise them to work uh, uh, intensively on the history of Arabic as a language and, and culture. Uh, and. Um, uh, for the future, I, I, I think they, they uh, because they, they, they have now uh, a wide knowledge, I mean, uh, a wide knowledge uh, in, in languages, uh, modern languages and also ancient languages, and uh, they have uh, also uh, the capability, they are capable to deal with, uh, with other cultures, uh, I mean, not only, I mean, not ancient cultures, also mo modern cultures in the world. Uh, I think they have more better opportunity than I had what I had before. Yeah. Um, and a lot of stones to. Uh, yes, I, I mean, I mean, okay, they have. Uh, we have to continue. I mean, documenting um, uh, the inscriptions uh, spread uh, spread all over the Jordanian uh, terrain, uh, and uh, I mean, this needs <laughs> many generations. I mean, uh, in the future, to be prepared for this task, you know. It's not uh, a task of one generation or two generations. We have to train uh, many generations so that they can continue documenting our cultural heritage. Uh, I mean, not only stones and inscriptions, but also uh, um, you know archaeology and uh, tangible heritage and intangible heritage. You know, I mean, I can't sip, you know, divide culture you know into parts. You know. They are all, uh, and they are all interconnected. You know, there are a lot of aspects that are interconnected, and can, uh, uh, after you know, by studying uh, these aspects, we can uh, uh, draw, uh, you know, a clear picture about uh, about our culture. 
Uh, what are you doing now? What was what is your focus yes, now? Yes. Uh, now uh, I am involved in different um, projects and uh, research uh, um, uh, endeavors in general. Um, well, uh, I'm now conducting a field work. Uh, uh, it's a long, um, you know, it, I mean, it's, it's a field work which I'm going to continue um, uh, for the next uh, few years uh, in the so-called Harra region, in the volcanic uh, region we, uh, we visited. Um, because, um, and I'm also trying to involve uh, foreign institutions to, uh, to work with me in, uh, in this field work. And uh, I mean, uh, it is, uh, I mean, we are trying to uh, document as far as possible uh, ancient North Arabian inscriptions from uh, northern Jordan and f from, from the so-called, um, from the so-called uh, northeastern Badia. Uh, um, it is. It has um, uh, a lot of. Um, I mean, the surfaces of stones constituted uh, an ideal canva for uh, writing inscriptions. Uh, uh, those inscriptions, I mean, were uh, written by um, people who, uh, you know, who, who were in the area. Um, I mean, maybe they had a Bedouin character, but it is not definite. <laughs> Uh, and uh, there is a countless number of inscriptions in this area and they need to be documented for future studies uh, so that we understand more and more about uh, the people and the area and the history of the area. But when we look around you, um, whole Jordan, it's all here, this was the land of milk and honey. Yes. I mean, it's one big archaeological black hole you still yeah. have to discover. Yes, I mean, <laughs> I'm not the only person, you know. Uh, in fact, in my institute uh, at Yarmouk University and the other institute uh, you saw today, um, uh, you, you have found out that we are trying to train um, students and to train new generation uh, to take the burden, you know, to continue this responsibility uh, in studying the uh, cultural heritage of Jordan. But it's so, uh, what, I, what I want to say, all these rocks have a, have a story. Yes, of you course. Are, you, you are the one so far that, that found some of the stories, but I mean, this is one big yeah. landscape of rocks wanting to speak. Yes, in fact, uh, this, is, uh, this is true, um, but... Um, what uh, is true? Uh, Sorry? This is, this is, I mean, uh, everywhere you find uh, inscriptions, everywhere you find uh, aspects of cultural heritage here in Jordan, uh, and uh, yes, I said we need generations and generations uh, that continue to document and study this cultural heritage. Uh, it is an evidence that this area contributed in the human history. It is an evidence, uh, what we see here, it's an evidence that uh, uh, this area, this region contributed to the human creativity. It's an evidence on hu human creativity. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, um, uh, we are trying to, um, to widen this knowledge, I mean, to widen uh, the spectrum uh, of, of this knowledge, uh, uh, not, uh, not only among the academics, but also among the local community, so that they can feel that they have, you know, uh, they have uh, old history and they are proud of. Uh, proud of. That they, that so that they understand they have old history and that they're proud of it. Is yes, uh, this is our intention. I mean, not only studying uh, the uh, cultural heritage in academic way, uh, but also to uh, uh, to let people know, uh, to let the community know that uh, they have uh, ancient history which contributed in the development of humanity as part of the development of civilizations. Yeah, it's quite a struggle. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I don't know, um, but this is uh, something, um, you know, it, it is, uh, but this is evident, you know, I mean, as you see, you know. For you it is evident, huh? for you it's evident, but is it also for the people evident? I mean, for the people, I don't think so. I don't think that all people in Jordan, uh, it's evident for them that, uh, uh, that Petra, for example, um, uh, that it contributed in the human development and the human civili civilizations. Uh, I mean, f for my, my father, for example, he never visited Petra, Petra, you know. I mean, he's from the local uh, Jordanian community, but he didn't visit, visit Petra before, you know. And I, I mean, I'm speaking my, uh, <laughs> myself, you know. <laughs> 
uh, yeah why, this why not well you know he's um, you know he's uh, okay i mean 72 years old he's uh, he has his own interests you know he's a businessman and he's uh, maybe not interested in uh, in uh, this field uh, but uh, you know i pr well i uh, i promised him to take home t to petra in maybe in one two years i'm i'm trying to convince him you know uh, but you know my concern is uh, it diff is it difficult to convince him you you are the one that Yes, that that's the, the, this, is, mean, this is the paradox, is because I am the one who should <laughs> make him aware about our uh, ancient uh, uh, about uh, our ancient heritage. But I am now concerned. Um, uh, but, uh, may, may, please, so you, what you're saying is it is it is a, it is strange. Your father, yes, you want you sh sh open the window, and your father has to be convinced to join you and, and look through the window. Yes, uh, through my window. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, this is a kind of paradox, you know, I can't explain that, but, but he didn't get the right education uh, to be aware of the, uh, of the importance of our cultural heritage. Um, but uh, we are trying this with the young generation now. Yeah. But when you look at this paradox, because your father stands for much more people than... stands for the Jordan, for the general opinion about it. No, not the general opinion, no. I mean, in, in his age, there are people who are interested, mm -hmm. in, in, who are interested in this heritage. And, uh, is, it, is it sometimes, do you feel lonely? Is it sometimes difficult to know so much of those beautiful era, era and that you see so many people that, you, that you're going to convince um, uh, or try to convince? Is it, is it, is it, gives it also a lonely feeling that you have one of the few that, that understands it? Yes, sometimes, yes. Mm, yeah, this is true. Uh, I feel my, myself sometimes uh, alone, even among my colleagues, you know, at Why? the university. How come? Why? And, uh, I, mean, I mean, not in my faculty, but in general, you know. Yeah, but because, you know, a uh, young generation now is interested in different things, you know, in IT and uh, uh, business administration, finance, etc., you know. And um, uh, this field is not... Um, okay, it's respected in Jordan, but... Um, uh, students uh, mostly uh, are interested, or young generation is interested in um, uh, in uh, majors uh, through which they can earn money, you know. And uh, I have to admit, you know, <laughs> through archaeology and heritage, um, this is sometimes difficult, you know. Yeah. So that makes that makes you lonely. Well, yeah, um, maybe yes, yeah, maybe, but. Um, I have some colleagues here in Jordan with whom with whom I can uh, communicate and exchange ideas, uh, and I have also um, colleagues from Europe and the States and the United States, uh, and we exchange ideas and opinions. <laughs> but mostly, we remain in the academic realm. You know, that's that, that's the problem, and the challenge now how to uh, uh, raise awareness about the importance. I mean, how to raise awareness uh, among the community members uh, about uh, this important cultural heritage, which should be disseminated, you know, and uh, g get known to a wide range of people. Mm -hmm. This is a challenge. I mean, I am okay as an academic. I, I do my part, but there are other uh, uh, there are other uh, uh, parties that can work with us, you know. For example, the media now. Uh, media can reach everybody in his uh, in his room. And uh, I think we have to work on this now, uh, for, for, for in the next st stage. Yeah. And the, and then, then you you start with the, f the rest of j the history of Jordan because it's this all also had, has to be, yeah, discovered uh, or has to be. Yeah, it had it has to be studied, discovered, explored. Uh, yeah, uh, but I'm <laughs> I'm just one person, you know, and that's why I said uh, we have to. Uh, build a generation uh, to yeah. get involved in studying uh, um, uh, this culture. Yeah. Um, what? What is your? Um, what? W what is your dream when you when you think in f 10, 15 years? What? 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 What is? It, what's your ideal Jordan look like? Jordan. Uh, mean As in in your f your. In my field. In yes. my field. Your field. 
Yes, I, I, I expect or I hope and, and wish that we, uh, we are going to, uh, uh, you know, to establish an academic school here in Jordan. Academic school, not in terms of university or in, a, in, in the way of thinking in, the, in this field. And um, I, I think I am part of this generation now because I was trained in Jordan. I mean, for my BA and MA, and I am very proud that to get my first training in Jordan, and it was consolidated uh, with uh, by my study in Germany and by my academic stays in in Europe and the, in the United States. Uh, and I, I'm sure that we are going uh, uh, further and uh, uh, try with uh, with um, uh, with the future generation, of course. Uh, to build this academic school, this, uh, I mean, academic uh, uh, school of thought in, 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 the, in the field of uh, cultural heritage in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you look at the field where you're now researching, where we were before, yeah. um, is it like, um, uh, that's quite a lot of work also, all those stones. Are all those stones already? Mm, yeah, not all the stones. As you, we have seen yesterday, we had to penetrate in the b in desert for 40, <laughs> 40, 40 kilometers to find the place, uh, I mean, to, to find the site where we uh, walked before. Uh, and uh, yes, I mean, there is a countless number of such inscriptions uh, spread over the stones of the desert right there in the north, I mean, north uh, eastern Badia. And yeah, of course, they need uh, expertise. They need uh, you know scholars. They need more uh, uh, trained students and uh, also uh, research institutions. Uh, uh, it was I suggested um, once a day that to establish you know a kind of uh, research uh, research center there you know in, in the desert you know so that so that uh, uh, such inscriptions uh, such. Uh, um, uh, archaeology uh, such sites can be easily accessible uh, to us. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is one of my dreams, you know, to establish a research center there. Mm -hmm. uh, and where do they publish their findings? Well, usually uh, we have uh, either we publish uh, the findings in books or we publish them in uh, journals uh, in different languages, uh, Arabic, German, English. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, those languages are, accep uh, you know, uh, accessible for us and sometimes in, in French. Uh, because some colleagues, uh, uh, some of my colleagues um, graduated from France and uh, England, for example, and they some you know they prefer to write in in the languages they uh, they master. And here in Jordan, yes, of course we have. Um, in fact, uh, the academic situation and the level of uh, education in Jordan is. Uh, um, is good here, and it has a, uh, it has a high standard in comparison to other uh, institutions um, in the region. But but can you, for example, also uh, uh, the stories that shed light on this on this era, pre-Islamic era, um, is it easy to to share it with the general public? Is it yeah. allowed? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This is. Uh, yeah. I mean, we can share it with the public. I mean, we hold conferences about our new discoveries. Uh, I mean, in few. I think it will. We are going. We are planning for a workshop. Uh, I think in uh, uh, March uh, 2016, uh, on on this subject about new discoveries in in Jordan, new epigraphical discoveries in Jordan. Uh, and uh, yes, I mean, there is no problem to share the, the information uh, with the public the, the, because, I mean, sometimes uh, uh, we compose uh, our articles and uh, research papers in Arabic and uh, I mean, Arabic is uh, <laughs> accessible for, every, for everybody in Jordan. Nobody can imagine what, what I'm also meaning is um, it is sometimes, I suppose, difficult um, to, when, uh, to, to when when there when you have a lot of people who think of ig the, the time before as ignorant as an ignorant yeah. t time to 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 let them know you know look through this window you see you, you see a different world yes yeah like what you're saying about um uh about what you're doing with yeah the, the yeah yeah yeah, 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 okay. yeah this is true uh, in fact the best way is to use uh, to implement or to use the um modern media possibilities to make the people aware about what, what they are discovering uh, and I'm trying my best uh, now to convince my university to integrate uh, 
uh, you know, um, this discipline, this academic discipline, uh, into different uh, uh, um, into different uh, academic fields. You know, uh, not only in archaeology, in, in the archaeological context, but also in the uh, maybe in the faculty in the department of Arabic studies. You know, because the Arabic studies department of Arabic studies in in the Ar departments of Arabic studies in the Arab world. They are, in fact, uh, not uh, um, you know, totally concerned with the, with the uh, ancient sources that we encounter in, in Arabia before Islam. What is the essence of what they are finding and what you are finding? Yes, uh, in fact, it's, it's very essential um, to understand um, you know, cultural historical aspects on the basis of inscriptions. Uh, for example, um, we know that uh, Arabia has uh, had always a constant uh, contact with the, with the uh, surrounding. I mean, uh, that we discovered uh, through the inscriptions, through the texts, uh, and we, we know that, for example, that Arabia had contacts with Egypt, with uh, with Greece, with um, uh, with Asia, with the other uh, with Asia, modern Turkey, and uh, with, uh, with Asia Minor and uh, also with other uh, remote areas. Uh, for example, uh, the Semit Semites, they, they, are, uh, they reached, you know, uh, Morocco and uh, reached the Tunisian and Morocco. And um, uh, through the inscriptions, we can uh, uh, find out how those people, how the Semitic people in this area uh, were in a strong and constant contact with the other people in, in the world. Uh, but why is it... You work, you, you, you find all these findings and this very important information, but you, you, we look around in, an, in a part of the world where all kind of conflicts emerge now yeah. around Jordan, yeah. which is all about historical, um, well, misconceptions also. I mean, you yeah, have, you have Daesh, you have, you have all kinds of, you have, you have countries that say you have to believe this and it, you do it like that. You have groups that say it's, it's like this and you should do it. How is that? I, I, I can imagine that's that's that is a lonely feeling when you when, when in this in this yeah. part of the world where they treat history. Yes, in fact, that's why we have to understand history in in, in the proper way. I mean, uh, we don't have to politicize history. You know, this is this is the the, the most dangerous thing, uh, and. Uh, you know, every group, uh, you know, tries to say that I am, I am the one who follows the right, uh, the right way. You know, but this is uh, this is not true. I mean, we have um, basic uh, ground, basic ground which we have to understand, uh, to understand it as it is. You know, we don't have to reflect our political, uh, you know, political backgrounds or. Uh, uh, on the culture, if we politicize, I don't know whether I'm using the right word. Uh, if we mm, if we understand culture and religion as well uh, in in the political context, um, definitely the res the uh, the result will be uh, will be dangerous. Yeah, you see that. Yes, in fact, uh, that's what what's happening now. In fact, in in the, in the surrounding. Uh, the surrounding region. Yeah. I mean, it's it's difficult. Uh, yeah, ev every every group has its own understanding, and uh, they defend that in different ways uh, uh, because the, of the lack of, uh, of, of 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 cultural dialogue. You know, and uh, I, I am dreaming of. Um, so could you explain to me the uh, what it means what you are doing? And what people in your workfield are doing for the enhancement of identity, the enrichment of the identity. Yes, uh, in fact, uh, um, maybe as you have seen that uh, I am working on um, in different fields, but are they, they are interrelated. Uh, I'm, I'm using the information contained in the inscriptions um, uh, to uh, uh, in order to reach a certain result, you know. And I'm using also uh, information uh, gained from uh, cultural heritage in general, especially the intangible cultural heritage, to uh, put uh, to put such the, uh, these results together in order to show how um, cultural heritage in general uh, uh, is important for identity. 
uh, in fact, identity uh, is not contained only in inscriptions, but also in other uh, sources. I mean, for example, the Arabian poetry is part of our uh, uh, history, uh, is part of our uh, identity, or the Arabic uh, poetry. And also the uh, holy book, uh, Quran, is also part of our identity because it's written in, in Arabic. Uh, and I think it's very crucial and important um, uh, to understand um, what the others wrote about Quran. And there are several institutions in, the, in, in Europe and uh, in the United States uh, who, uh, that take care, I mean, that uh, study in Qur Quran in a different, uh, um, from a different perspective and in a different methodology. Um, a lot of studies appeared in the last 20 years about Quran from Germany, France, uh, and other um, uh, and other countries in, in, in the world, but um, I, I have the problem, uh, <coughs> or uh, I think I would suggest the, uh, the institu academic institutions in the Arab world uh, to start um, uh, understanding what the, the Europeans wrote uh, about about this uh, about this book, about this holy book, in fact. And so that we can understand from the methodological level how the European scholars study Quran. Uh, because studying the Quran uh, traditionally would, uh, traditionally, uh, without taking into consideration um, the, uh, uh, the, the new publications uh, written in different languages, uh, for example, in German, French, or Russian, I don't know, uh, I think uh, it would lead to a kind of, um, I don't know, it, co it could lead to a kind of uh, misunderstanding of the others and, uh, and their work concerning Quran. Uh, and because, uh, I mean, uh, it, it's, it's for me important uh, to show how, uh, um, how Europeans dealt with the Qur'an in general, especially in the last 20-30 uh, years ago. Uh, all the literature about the Qur'an um, uh, mostly uh, translated into Arabic, and we knew the contents uh, uh, of it. But uh, in the last 20-30 years, we have, uh, I mean, Arab scholars who has no access to foreign languages, uh, uh, this will remain for them closed. I mean, the, the, this uh, uh, this literature in, written in, in other language in other languages remains for them closed. You know, they they, know, they don't know a lot about it. That's why I suggest that we uh, um, we try we start translating this into uh, in, into Arabic. Yeah. Uh, but that's the, the core of who you are. I mean, languages yeah. f is, are the key. Yes, are the key of, of cultures, yeah. And, and also the, to understand identity, your own identity. Yeah. Yes, of course. I mean, studying, um, well, studying ancient uh, written sources uh, that are written in Arabian languages and uh, um, uh, studying also uh, their uh, cultural connotations uh, in addition to uh, 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 to their cultural backgrounds, and uh, this would shed the light on the people uh, who who wrote uh, these texts, and uh, also uh, make them feel uh, proud about our identity and understanding the identity. Yeah, and to understand it in a proper way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for that reason, the language, the languages, the understanding yes. of lang languages, f form the basis for. Y yes, of course. I mean, I mean, I mean, the languages are are the keys. Uh, I mean, are the keys to uh, to cultures uh, and uh, uh, and cultures con uh, cultural va uh, values are contained in cultures. Uh, and uh, studying the languages is, of course, the key to understand the cultural backgrounds. Uh, uh, I mean, especially in in. Uh, regarding uh, ancient civilizations uh, because they are you know they don't exist anymore but we have there the texts that has been that have been left by uh, those who composed composed them we can uh, get uh, uh, get some gl glimpses uh, about the cultural background uh, from from these texts and uh, and they would help us in enhancing uh, the the identity yeah. That's why your work is so important. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, don't you think yourself that yeah, it's important? Yeah, of course. I mean, 
I think it's an important discipline which should be, uh, I mean, which should be supported. I mean, in every Jordanian uh, institution, yeah. academic institution. I mean, and with every by with by every Jordanian. Yes, of course. I mean, uh, first of all, we have to start in the academic institutions. <laughs> And uh, then uh, we should think in a further step how to disseminate this knowledge among uh, uh, the local communities. Yeah. yeah. So that also the people that visit Petra, for example, understand what Petra is, and that's yes, not of like a, yeah. because <laughs> now it is sometimes used as a kind of a, another. Well, yeah, this is a, a difficult story <laughs> to tell because now Petra is being consumed if uh, if we remain uh, investing it in this way. Uh, I feel that uh, Petra is part of our identity here in Jordan and we have to uh, uh, preserve it and safeguard it uh, uh, as a cultural space, you know, uh, and for the future generations. Because it is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a site like Petra is, um, um, is a place which is uh, uh, unparalleled, I mean, uh, in, 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 the, in the world. And uh, we are very proud to, to have it, but we have in the same time uh, to do our best to uh, safeguard it and also to, to present it in, 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 in a proper way. Uh, and in addition to, uh, as, as in addition to, uh, to it being as uh, an, um, uh, part of our identity in Jordan, uh, I think it's also a source for income generation for, uh, for the national income. Um, and uh, I mean, uh, we can do, uh, I mean, we have the ability here in Jordan to, uh, uh, to start working on the site in, uh, in a proper way to uh, conserve it and to safeguard it for future generations. Yeah, I mean, this, uh, this, this is also can be applied to other uh, sites in Jordan. Uh, as you mentioned before, Jordan is um, a museum, you know, it's an open museum. Uh, I mean, if you uh, travel from the north to the south, you will always encounter uh, cultural, her cultural heritage sites or natural sites, uh, and they constitute, of course, uh, part of our uh, uh, any local identity. But they only have to see it, yeah? Yes, I mean, this is an important thing as well. We have to make the people aware, uh, aware of, of the importance of, of, of such archaeological sites or her heritage sites in general. Yeah. yeah, because by understanding it, they they yeah. understand their own identity. Yeah, definitely. And that they they understand they are more than just yeah. an Islamic, or just they are more that there, there is more than an, than the Islamic history. Uh, yes, uh, in fact, uh, I hope I feel that this part is not. Okay. <laughs> I mean, okay. 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 Yeah, I mean, I mean, Islam is our also as. Uh, part of our history, part of our identity as well. I mean, if you want to, I don't know, do you want to, do you want me to say it again? I mean, uh, you, well, you can say it again. It, it's, uh, yeah, you can say it again, the way you like. Yes, in fact, uh, it's not only uh, the cultural heritage is part of our identity and um, the identity, the religious identity of the people who are living in Jordan uh, is part of the uh, entire identity of the Jordanian community. I mean, we have Muslims, we have Christians here in Jordan, but they constitute the, 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 the both religions here in Jordan are part of our uh, identity as Jordanians in a whole. And as Ar Arabs in a whole. Yeah, yeah, as Arabs, of course, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, a lot of work to do for you. <laughs> Yes, uh, in fact, um, I am I'm an individual, uh, but I'm trying my best. And uh, as, I, I, as I mentioned, I hope that uh, we can uh, uh, cooperate. Uh, I mean, cooperate with the young generation to at the end to have, uh, um, you know, a group of researchers, a group of uh, um, uh, a group of uh, interested people, not only from the academic institutions, but also from the uh, from the local communities to work together and to cooperate so that we can uh, enhance uh, our identity and uh, as Jordanians, as Muslims, Christians and as Arabs. Yeah. Yeah.